Okay, so this will be our first video throughout these two weeks. Okay, so uh, we are learning a new chapter which is integration. So while you are watching this video, I hope that you can uh, take a paper or pen with you that you can do like solve the question together while I'm teaching here. Okay, so as usual, so we'll look at the learning outcome of this topic first before we start. So there are four main learning outcomes that we will be achieving throughout this chapter. So the first one is understand integration as the inverse process or the reverse process of differentiation. So you still remember in differentiation you learn about few techniques which is the first one how to do integration for the constant multiple uh, when you do addition and you do subtraction and also for composite function. So it's the same thing you are not going to do like substitution or like ln in this chapter is gonna uh is gonna to be like quite a simple integration. Okay, so the first one that you are learning is the constant multiple, which is the normal like a x power n. So later we'll be going through together. Then the second one is sum and difference, meaning that when you have addition and subtraction, then what is the technique that you will be using? And the last one is composite index, which is ax plus v n. Okay, so for all your n is going to be a rational number for n, except uh, negative one. Okay, so these are the three techniques that you are going to learn. Then after that, you need to know how to solve problem involving the evaluation of a constant. So basically, this is the same thing like, uh, you know, you learn how to find equation of curve, uh, then after that, find equation of tangent, equation of normal, then after that, maximum point, minimum point. So now we are doing the whole reverse process. Okay, so the third one is how to evaluate a definite integral. So meaning like you have integral with limit. Okay, I uh, think you learned it in your IG also. Then after that, this will be something new for you. So under this learning outcome, you have one special uh, term that you are going to learn, which is called improper integral. So which is like a uh, integral with limit, but your limit is like infinity. Okay, but yeah, no worry, we are going to do it together. So the last one is how to use the definite integration that you learn above. So basically you are doing two things with this integration. So which is the first one is how do you find area under a curve or like area between the curve and the line and so on. Then after that, the last one will be something new for you, which is how to find volume. Okay, it's basically volume that uh, revolves around the x-axis or y-axis. So this is basically the learning outcome that we'll be going through together in this week. Alright, so for today's lesson, we are going to cover this part and this part and the first part for definite uh, integral because it's something that you already learned in IG. So I think that it's just like a revision so we can do more for this lesson and after that we can uh, slow down a little bit for the area and volume part. Okay, so let's start with a very brief introduction for integration. So as you know already, integration is the inverse for differentiation. So basically what you remember for differentiation is like when y is equals to fx, it means that dy dx will be equals to f prime x. So integration is the reverse process of differentiation. So what happens is when dy dx equals to f prime x, so y will be equals to integrate your dy dx function with respect to dx, with respect to x, sorry, or integrate Sorry, it's raining now. I hope that uh, you still can like hear it very clearly. So integrate your f prime function with respect to dx. Okay. 
Alright, so we start from normal algebraic function. So let's say if you have a function that gives you x power 3 plus c. Okay, so when you do uh, differentiation, what will happen? So you remember the first step that you will do is you multiply the algebraic with the power that you have. So it will become 3 x cubed. Okay, so this is power 0, then after that when you times with 0, it, uh, I mean, it disappeared. Then after that, so the first thing you multiply with 3. Then after that, you will minus your power, minus 1. So this is how you get to your answer, 3x squared for dy dx. So let's say now we are doing the re reverse. So what happened is, the function is going to be, like this way. So the first thing that you are doing, uh, instead of doing power minus 1, what we will do is power plus 1. Then after that, the second thing that you are going to do, instead of my uh, multiply by 3, then you will do divide by 3. Okay, so here come our first formula for integration, which will give you, sorry, I think maybe I need to write a little bit bigger. Okay, so the first formula that we have here is like uh, when you integrate a x power n with respect to x. So what happened is, so you see just now power plus 1. So the power here is n, so n plus 1, a x n plus 1. Then after that, divide by 3. So divide by 3 meaning divide the power that you have. So the power that we have here is n plus 1. So divide the whole thing by n plus 1. Okay, but don't forget, this function you don't have a limit. So it's an infinite, uh, infinite integration. So what you need to do is, you see, throughout this process, the c is gone. So when you do the reverse function, what you need to do is for your answer, you need to do a plus c. Okay, so this is your first formula. Then after that, we are going to look at two special uh, operations for integration. Okay, so if you have something that is a constant, so meaning if you are integrate, for example, a function k f x. Okay, so what you can do is, of course, you can do it like normal, like you divide, then after that, you just deal with the k. But the other way that you can do is you can actually bring the k out from the integration, but you must make sure that your k is a constant. So k, after that, you only start to do your integration. Okay, so this is the first operation that will be helpful in the process that we do integration. After that, we have the second one. So when you integrate a function, let's say fx plus gx or minus also can. Okay, so multiply and divide, you cannot use this operation. It's only for plus and minus. So what you can do is instead of putting them together in one integration, you can separate them into two. So integrate fx with respect to x plus minus integrate gx with respect to x. Okay, so these are the three formula. Then later we are going to look at some example just to do some revision on what you learn in IJ. Okay, now let's look at some example. Okay, so example one, so it's basically integrate lah. Okay, so a let's say if you have a function like 4x power 3 okay sorry integrate 4x power 3 with respect to the x okay so you remember the formula just now what we did power plus 1 and you divide by the power so 4x power 3 so when you plus 1 your power become 4 and then after that okay we do step by step first okay so for x okay power plus one so three plus one so divide by your power which is three plus one so don't forget you need to do a plus a constant so equals to 
So 4x power 4 divided by 4, you will get x power 4 plus c. Okay? So question 2. So let's say if you have a function, integrate square root x with respect to x. Okay, so what you will get? Yeah, you can always take a paper and do together so you won't feel like that boring to watching this and then to listen to me then without doing anything then you will feel very boring okay so with this then uh, it's the same like when we do differentiation so let's change this into index first okay so differentiate instead of writing square root x then we change it into index form which gives us x power 1 over 2 dx okay so equals to so the same thing since you already know, then we will fast forward the process, meaning power plus 1 divided by the power. So, 1 over 2 plus 1, it will give you 3 over 2. Then after that, when you divide by 3 over 2, okay, then plus C. Then after that, divide by 3 over 2, you will get 2 over 3, then X, 3 over 2 plus C. Okay, so if you want to write it back to the index also can, but I think for this exercise when you are doing integration, uh, you can just leave your answer that is totally fine for this one. I mean, you don't, uh, the question will come out like this in your exam, so it's going to be like equation and so on. So for that part, you need to do it, you need to write it back into the index, uh, the square root formula. Okay, so for this case, if you want to write then 2 over 3, square root x power 3 plus c okay so this will be your answer okay number three so let's say if you have a function gives you integrate 2 over x power 4 dx okay so let's do the same thing so you try to change this into index form first before you continue so equals to integrate so 2 if you don't have to deal with fraction then what you can do is you can bring out the 2 first so this is basically 2 over 1 so it's 2 la, then x minus 4 dx Equ equals 2 so power plus 1 negative 4 plus 1 which gives you negative 3 so 2 divide by negative 3 and then x negative 3 so sorry plus c so equals 2, if you want to write back negative 2 over 3, x power 3 plus c. Okay, try not to leave your answer in negative form. Okay, so third example. So fourth, so let's say if you have integrate, let's say 3, okay, 1 over 2, x 2, 3 over 2. Okay. We press back to dx also. Okay. So, same thing. Let's change it into index form. So, this is 1 over 2. So, when you bring it out, make sure that you don't write 2 as a constant. So, it's like in a fraction. So, 1 over 2. X. Then power negative 3 over 2. Dx. Okay. Then after that, you can start your integration here. So, same thing, power plus 1, which will give you, okay, maybe for this one, it's hard a bit. So, x, so, okay, power plus 1, which will, which will give you negative 1 over 2. So, divide the whole thing by negative 1 over 2. Then, remember, plus a constant. So, equals to half divided by negative half will give you negative 1 over 4 and then x negative 1 over 2 plus c so we change it this is a negative and half meaning a square root so negative 1 over 4 square root x okay uh, did I do something wrong? oh I'm so sorry uh, half divide by half you should get a 1 so here you will have this answer plus c sorry there's no one over 4 so half divided by negative half which uh, gives you negative 1 so negative 1 over square root x plus c okay so uh, maybe we do one more for a single then later we move on to addition and subtraction okay 
So E. Let's say if we have seven x squared divided by ten square root x. Okay. So in this case, you see it's like a UV form because both you have an X in your expression. So what you need to do is you need to combine them first like use, uh, using the knowledge of index, you can combine the X together. Okay, so, sorry, differentiate the X. Okay, so the first thing you are doing is try to change it. So 7 over 10, you bring it up first. Okay, then after that you have X squared. Okay, so this is x squared divided by square root x, so basically which means x squared divided by x power 1 over 2, so minus 1 over 2 dx, so equals 2, so if you need, you still remember just now we have a law or something like this, so we can bring a constant out, so for this case, if you want to bring it out, you can do that, so meaning 7 over 10, you bring it out first, then after that, you differentiate what is inside, so x 2 minus 1 over 2 will give you 3 over 2 dx. So equals to 7 over 10, then you start your differentiation. So power plus 1, then divide by your power. So power plus 1 will, uh, will give you 5 over 2. So when you change it, you get 2 over 5x, and then 5 over 2. So remember, plus c. Okay, so equals to... So, you can multiply them together. So, do I think anything wrong? Negative, oh uh, yeah. 14 over 50. So, x, 5 over 2. So, 7 divided by 10, and then you need to times the plus c also. But we, since we do not know the constant, then we can just leave the answer plus c. Like, when you write c and you write 0 0.7c, it's going to be the same thing. So it equals to 14 over 50, then when you simplify, you get 7 over 25. So x, it will be square root x power 5 plus c. Alright? Okay, so let's continue with addition and subtraction. Okay. Integrate 9 minus x, so you are going to do this in a normal way, like differentiate when you do addition and you do subtraction, it's going to be the same thing. So just treat them like a single, uh, single term. Okay, so uh, it's totally fine if you want to change it in this form first, then after that you only start to do integration, or you straight away do integration in this way, because it's not going to be... Uh, multiply or divide so it's totally fine so yeah let's straight away do this so 9 you integrate them separately so 9 when you integrate it will give you 9x so minus x so which gives you minus 1 over 2 or like x square over 2 okay then after that this is basically negative 2x power negative 4 right so when you plus 1 to your power you get negative 3 then divide by your power which gives you plus 2 over 3 x power negative 3 so which gives you x3 so plus c okay so this will be your last answer yeah then after that let's see some longer question okay so let's say we have g here Okay, so if you have square root x times with x square plus 2x, sorry, integrate dx. Okay, so equal to Okay, so obviously you can see that this is like multiplication multiplication we don't have any rule in uh, integration that teach you how to do it like in a uv form so that's why we try to expand it okay so square root x is basically x power 1 over 2 so which will give you the answer x then 1 over 2 plus 2 which will give you 5 over 2 and then plus 2 x so this is power 1 plus 1 over 2 gives you 3 over 2 then the x then after that you can 
(uh) continue your integrate like normal okay so this one same thing so when you do plus one it's going to give you seven over two when you divide it will give you two over seven so x seven over two okay so plus so three over two when you plus one it will give you five over two so when you divide two over two divide by five over two will give you four over five then after that x so power five over two okay then dx so if you want to write it in uh index form also okay so which means you are going to change it to two over seven square root x power 7 and then plus 4 over 5 square root x power 5 remember plus constant sorry plus a constant okay so let's move on for the next question okay so h okay so if you have a question that 3 minus x squared plus x5 everything over x5 and you need to integrate this expression okay so what is the step that you need to do okay so divide your whole term separate them into three different fraction so which mean the first one will give you three over x power 5 so which gives you 3 x power negative 5 minus x2 over x5 which gives you x negative 3 then plus 1 the x okay now after that you can start to do your integration like normal so i'm just going to skip this step like very fast so i don't need to like keep on continue like power plus one divided by one and i think the whole process you can do it yourself so i'm just going to write down the answer and for you to check okay so you should be getting an answer negative three over four x power four plus one over two x square plus x and remember plus a constant okay so i'm going to write down two uh maybe one more for this okay square root x 3x square minus 2x okay so when you have this equation that may be your first uh, idea is you will try to expand it then you times with your x but after that you can realize you have a square root so let's say if only using this method then how uh, how are we going to do that so let's separate them into two different square root which mean sorry i forgot again okay integrate dx okay so integrate so let's split them into two different square root so square root x and square root 3x square minus 2 square dx so equals 2 then now you can try to combine them so the first one will give you x1 over 2 so this is a square expression so when you put them under a square root equation uh the power will be eliminated so you are left with 3x square minus 2 dx okay then after that you combine them together so 3x so 1 over 2 plus 2 you will get 5 over 2 and then minus 2 x 1 over 2 dx okay so they are in this form already which means you can start to do a differentiation so same thing i'm going to write down the answer then you can check it yourself so 6 over 7 x then 7 over 2 minus 4 over 3 x power 3 over 2 plus c okay so remember to try it out yourself so next part we are going to look at the composite function okay so let's move on for next formula for composite function so for this function uh you remember when we learn for differentiation 
there is no limitation on what is the function or what is the expression inside. It can be a quadratic, it can be a cubic, and any polynomial. But for integration, we are only going to learn for linear. So you must remember this formula only applies for ax plus b inside a bracket. So it cannot be a quadratic, it cannot be a power more than 1. Okay, so this is only for ax plus b. Cool. So let's do some recap on... Uh, how do you differentiate this? I'm sorry. Okay, so how you differentiate this? Okay, so dy dx, so you remember the first step that you are going to do is n, you will move it in front. So basically, you are going to multiply your power, okay, which gives you n, then ax plus b power n. After that, you are going to do power minus 1. Okay, that is what we are doing. N ax plus b. And after that, n minus 1. So after that, your last step is you will differentiate what is inside, right? So for this case, ax plus b, basically you are getting a. And after that, you are going to times your a also. So you times the a. Then you will get n. So basically you will write it at the back. But at this time I'm just going to write it in the front. So a times your whole function left. Okay, let's write in this way. Okay, alright. So now for integration. So we are doing the reverse process. So let's see what's the reverse process. Okay, so now let's say we have uh, ax plus b. Okay. So, here. So let's start with here. Let's say we have a dy dx here. It's going to be ax plus b. Okay? So for just now, what we are doing is we are going to multiply a. So for the reverse function for multiply, meaning it will be divide. Okay? So it will become divide by a. So you will get ax plus b power n divide by a. Then after that, the reverse function of power minus 1, which means we will do power plus 1. So the power plus 1, which will give us ax plus b n plus 1 divide by a. So after that, you multiply the power. So now become you divide the power. So that's why you are doing a plus b. Sorry, ax plus b and plus 1. Divide by a. Then you divide the power. So which gives you this formula. Okay, so let's write down the formula here. So later we can refer here when you need. Okay, so meaning when you want to integrate a composite function which is ax plus b power n dx. What you need to do is you need to divide. So let's see. Okay, let's look at this. So ax plus b. So what you need to do is your power need to plus 1. Then after that, you divide by your power. Then after that, you divide also by the number that you differentiate inside, which is a. Okay, so this will be our formula for composite function. Okay, so now let's look at some of the example. So let's start with an easy one first. Okay, so example A. Okay, differentiate 3x plus 2 power 3dx. Okay, so you remember just now power plus 1, then after that, you divide by the power and you divide by what you divide by your a in your linear equation okay so in this case meaning you can copy the bracket first 3x plus 2 power plus 1 meaning 3 plus 1 gives you 4 divide by your power and then divide by your a which is 3 or you can uh, remember you just differentiate inside but uh, for all the questions that you are doing this formula only apply for linear equations so whenever you differentiate you will still get a so you can just remember a you or you want to remember 
you divide by the differentiated term also is totally fine so plus c okay so let's simplify your answer so 3x plus 2 power 4 divided by 12 plus c okay so set the number one go so let's see number two so let's say b okay so if you have differentiate three sorry differentiate five over two minus three x power three dx okay so the same thing you can see this is in the form of composite function which what is in your bracket is a linear expression so what you can do is you can change them into index form first so the same thing we have this formula so uh, if you want to ease your process what you can try to do is you bring out a 5 since it's a constant so equals to 5 you bring it up then you differentiate what is inside so this one will give you 2 minus 3x to the power of negative 3 dx okay after that you solve it like normal okay so copy your bracket power plus 1 which gives you negative 2 divide by your power divide by your a so don't be confused your a will be the one that in front of x is not the constant part so negative 3 okay so close it and remember plus c okay so equals to 5 so what you left here is like negative 3 times negative sorry negative 2 times negative 3 give you 6 so 5 over 6 2 sorry negative 2 so let's do this uh, ah, okay 5 over 6 so we should we bring it then 2 minus 3x square plus c okay so this will be your answer for b okay so let's move on for c okay let's see if you have something like this okay so how are you going to do this because uh when you see like this right it's not in a ax i mean you can do x plus b but uh no you can't because the numerator is in the uh, addition and subtraction form so you cannot do that so what we are trying to do is we try to uh clear out the index for the numerator part okay so let's see equals to okay so you must remember the power 4 applies to both numerator and denominator so 2 to the power of 4 will give you 16 then which is a constant so we can do it like normal we bring the 16 outside okay so remember 2 to the power of 4 16 at your numerator so you can bring your numerator outside then after that you do the same thing like what you do for number b which will gives you 2x minus 3 and the power minus 4 dx okay so i'm just going to solve this like a very quick one okay so 2x minus 3 plus 1 gives you negative 3 divide by negative 3 and also your a which is 2 so plus c equals to can you see that okay then after that uh negative 3 times 2 gives you negative 6 so 16 and 6 uh, 8 over 3 so 8 over this will be a whole thing negative 3 then this is set your denominator part to the power of 3 plus c okay so this will be your last answer for this question okay so uh Okay, maybe look at two more questions, which is from uh, from a square root part, maybe. Okay. Okay, so this one we have a uh, cube root. So let's do this like normal. So 2, which is a constant, you can bring it up. 
so actually when (uh) if you put it inside it's totally fine also but maybe I mean (uh) it will confuse your process and so on so it will be easier that I bring it out so square root (uh) sorry don't know why it's a bit let's zoom it oops okay two so three x plus seven in the cube root if we change it into index then it will be three x plus seven power one over three dx okay then after that you can solve it like normal two then after that start to do your integration power plus one give you two over three so okay 3x plus 7 so power plus 1 gives you 4 over 3 so divide by your power divide your a okay so plus c equals to so 2 uh, 3 3 cancel off so bring this out it will be 1 over 2 and then you have 3 x plus 7 power 4 in a cube root so plus c okay so i hope that you are fine with this then later we are going to look at some further differentiation question all right so we are looking at three question on further indefinite uh, integration so this is basically like how do you use the concept of integration as a reverse of differentiation in solving a question which is a composite function but it is not a linear composite function so like in this case case so number one a so you need to show that when you differentiate y equals to 3x square minus 4 in power 5 will give you that then after that you will need to use that to find the answer for differentiation for the other term okay so let's see this so number one so this is basically about your differentiation so we can do this uh, in a quick way okay number one so show that okay so basically a okay so you need to differentiate with respect to x for the term 3x square minus 4 to power of 5 okay so equals to so do it like your normal differentiation so power uh, don't uh, confuse it with integration so this is differentiation so what you need to do is multiply the power first and power uh, minus 1 and multiply with your the differentiated part for what is inside the bracket Okay, so multiply 5 3x square minus 4 power minus 1 differentiate inside you will get x 6x so basically this will give you 30 so 5 times 6x so 30x 3x square minus 4 4 okay so you can see it's totally the same so this is proof Okay, so let's move on for B. Okay, so basically it's like how are we going to use this to help us to find the answer of this. Okay, so we can copy down this first. 6x, 3x squared minus 4 to the power of 4dx. Okay, so what we need to realize here is how are we going to like multiply the equation with a constant which will help us to get this. Okay, so... Uh, if you look at the equation right you can actually realize for a you have 30x then 3x squared minus 4 in the power of 4 so you have the exactly same thing in the b part so the difference part is just that for 30x and 6x so since differentiate this will give you this answer meaning that when you integrate this you should get this answer so we need to use these properties to help us to find this so 30x and 6x so what we can try to do is we try to connect them together so how can you get 6 from 30 so basically it's like 30 you need to times 1 over 5 so meaning for this equation we can change it to 1 
over five integrate thirty x three x square minus four power four dx okay you still remember this properties right so we are doing the exactly same thing so meaning that since the six we can bring out so it's the same thing like for thirty so we if we bring it out and you times them or or you just bring the one over five in now one over five times thirty will give you six x so that's why we can change it into this form so now can you realize that this and this what is inside your integration is totally the same with the answer that you got from a so if we want to integrate this is the same thing for the equation before we do differentiation so meaning 1 over 5 so when we integrate this we should able to get back to this so that's why 3 x squared minus 4 to power of 5 okay but you must remember plus c so that will be your final answer cool Okay, so let's look at the second question, which is a similar question like this. So if you find it very difficult to understand, then you can just copy down first, and after that you can refer it again, or you want to replay the video again, like, depends on you. Okay, so let's look at question 2. Okay, differentiate y equals to 1 over 1 over 2x squared to the power of 3, then after that use that answer to find that. So you can realize it's actually the same kind of question, so it's just that the change of equation. So let's do this, okay, A. So differentiate this, so meaning dy dx will be equals to, uh, sorry, let's change them first. Okay, so y equals to 1 over this, so meaning that you can always change it to 1 minus 2x squared bracket negative 3. Okay, then you can start to do your differentiation. So dy dx will be equals to negative 3, A, bring it in front, 1 minus 2x squared. So negative 3 minus 1, which gives you negative 4. Okay, and after that, you need to multiply the differentiated part inside. So meaning for this term, you will get negative 4x. So equals to negative 3 times negative 4x, you get 12x. Then 1 minus 2x squared, negative 4. Then we rewrite again, you should get 12x over 1 minus 2x square power of 4. Okay, so we finish for a part. Now after that, let's go on to b. Okay, so you have, you need to find this. So let's copy that first. Integrate 3x over 1 minus 2x square to the power of 4 dx. Okay, let's do it here. Alright, so the same thing, you can realize that here and here, you get the similar but with a different constant. So from A, you get 12, for B, you have 3. So how are you going to connect 3 together with 12? So meaning that how can you change it in another form, which still give you 3x, but I want my, what is inside the integration be in the same exactly same form like your answer in A. So basically 3, 12. So how can you get 3 from 12? So it's basically you need to times 1 over 4. So that's why I can always change it to 1 over 4 and 12x divide by 1 minus 2x square power 4 dx. Okay? So you can always check it like 1 over 4 times 12x, do you still get 3x? So if yes, then you are doing the correct thing. So you can see this is basically the same thing like this already. So this is after differentiate. So when you integrate the differentiation part, you will get back the original equation. So that's why 1 over 4, the whole thing, you can change it to 1. 1 minus 2x squared. Sorry, I'm referred to here. So like when you integrate your dy dx, you get y. La. So dx. So equals to, now simplify your answer. 
So 1 over 4, 1 minus 2x square power of 3 dx. Okay, settle. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. The last question in this form. Okay, so 3, 8. So you need to differentiate square root x plus 1 power 5. Then after that, you need to find the integration also. Okay, so let's start with differentiation. Okay, so differentiate this. Then uh, let's assign that to be y. Okay, so y equals to so if you find it difficult then you can always change it into index first x 1 over 2 plus 1 to the power of 5 so dy dx equals to okay so power 5 x 1 over 2 plus 1 power minus 1 then times what is inside so 1 over 2 x minus 1 so you get negative 1 over 2 okay so let's write it in a better way so for this case you have 5 so this is basically like 1 over 2 you can always times with 5 so you have 5 over the numerator part x square root x plus 1 power of 4 divide by so you still have a 2 here so 2 then x power of negative 1 over 2 which gives you a square root x in the denominator part so finish for number 8 okay so for b you need to integrate x plus 1 power 4 divided by square root x dx okay equals 2 so now you can realize that it's the same thing, you have the similar form again. But what is the number that you can multiply with this so that you can get exactly the same thing here? So this is 5 over 2. For this one, you don't have any constant. So basically, you times the reciprocal of it, then you'll get your answer. So which means you reverse your... Uh, change the side of your 5 and 2. So meaning it will give you 2 over 5. Then after that, 5 square root x plus 1 power 4 divided by 2 square root x okay so it's basically like when you change it right so 5 5 cancel off 2 2 cancel off then you get back the exactly the same thing so since that what is inside your integration is totally the same thing like your a so mean that when you difference when you differentiate dy dx you should get y so for this case this is your y so 2 over 5 square root x plus 1 power 5 and don't forget plus c okay so we finish this part okay so next part definite uh, integration so meaning integration with given limits so uh, it's a very easy part that you already learned in ig so basically uh, you do integration so you remember for every term for your integration you need to put a c but for definite integration mean that they already set a limit for you so what are you going to do is you are going to substitute your limit into the form after you do your integration so you must remember you have an upper limit and you have a lower limit for the uh, definite integration so no matter which one is greater or which one is smaller you must always use the upper limit to minus the lower limit so like for example here it's like 3 1 so you must never use substitute 1 to minus substitute 3 so always start with an upper limit minus a lower limit so the idea for it is like when you integrate this part you are going to get a limit from 1 to 3 so that's why from 1 to 3 so we are going to use the answer for 3 to minus the answer for 1 okay so let's try number 1 okay so basically the process is you start the same thing like how you do normal integration equals to 3 1 okay so 3x cubed divide by so we are going to put them into two different because this is divide you cannot solve in a uv form so what you are trying to do is you split them into two different fractions so 3x cubed divide by x squared will give you 3x 
minus 1 over x squared will give you x power negative 2 dx. So equal to, so after you did your, uh, you change it into your index form, then after that you can start with your integration. So, sorry. When you start integration, then you don't need to write integration form already because you already started. So you put that into a box bracket. Okay, so 3x, so integrate it, then you will get 3 over 2x power 2. So plus 1, then divide. So you have plus, in this case, you will get 1 over x. Okay, basically plus 1, you get negative 1, then divide by negative 1, it gives you positive 1. Then, you rem remember to write your limit at the end of your bracket, so 3, 1. So, after that, what are, go what are you going to do is you are going to substitute your 3 inside this expression and to minus the expression substituting 1. So, equals to, I'm sorry, I'm scared that there's no uh, enough spaces, so that's why, uh, yeah, please bear with me. Okay, so 3 over 2. So your x start with 3, remember from upper limit first, square plus 1 over 3. Okay, close it, finish your upper limit, then after that, minus, okay, your first limit, 3 over 2, 1 square plus 1 over 1. Then after that, you can use your calculator to help you to solve. So basically, 3 square times 3, you get 27 over 2 plus 1 over 3 minus it's totally fine you do a square bracket uh you do a round bracket now so 3 over 2 plus 1 okay so you use your calculator to help you to solve and you'll be able to get your answer 11 1 over 3 okay so that'll be your answer for the first a okay so let's go to b so remember the same thing, you're going to do integration like normal. So let's change it into index form first. So equal to, okay, 4, 0, 2x plus 1, power 1 over 2, dx. Okay, then you can always start your integration already. So power plus 1 divided by your power and then divide by your a. So don't forget, this is composite form. Okay, so 2x plus 1, so power plus 1, divide by your power, and divide by your a. Okay, for 0. So equals 2, so 2, 2, then you get a 3, so you can put it out or you want to put it in this form, it totally depends on you. So you will get 2x plus 1, 3 over 2, and then divide by 3. Okay, so the whole thing, 4, 0. So now what's next? You are going to substitute your 4, 0 inside your uh, expression of integration. Okay, so let's start with 4. 2, 4, plus 1, 3 over 2, divide by 3. That's the first one. After that, the 0. So 2, 0, plus 1, 3, 2, divide by 3. Okay? I mean, of course, you can show away get like a, then nine, then you show away do your calculation. But I recommend you to write it down everything. So, in case your last answer is wrong, then you still get your marks for the method part. Okay. So equals two. So here you have two four, uh, which gives you eight eight plus one nine nine square root three three. So you get twenty seven twenty seven divided by three will give you nine. You can use your calculator to this, do this part, like 0 plus 1, then 1 over 3. So you will get to your last answer, which gives you 26 over 3, or uh, 8, and then 2 over 3. Okay, so set the for B. So now let's look at the next question. Okay, 
will be too small. I hope that is not too small. Okay, so let's see the next one. Okay, C. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Then what you can do here is uh, okay, maybe let's try this one that we try to bring uh, the constant out Then maybe you can try to see how are we going to do that Okay Equals to Okay, so let's bring out the 4 2 negative 3 Then you left with 5 minus x Negative 3 dx Equals to Okay, then you start your integration. Oops, sorry. Okay, power plus one divide by power divide by your a. Okay, what is in front of your x? Two negative three equals to four. Okay, so you must remember 4 is for everything here then later uh, when you multiply you must multiply your 4 with the rest of your answer okay so uh let's maybe we try to uh make it a better one for this part so you can see 2 times 1 which gives you 2 so you can straight away bring it outside it's totally fine so divide by 2 then after that you will left with 1 over 5 minus x then power 2 okay 2 negative 3 so equals 2 so let's try to write down everything before you solve it so 2 you can make this bracket okay so substitute 2 first 1 over 5 minus 2 power 2 minus 1 over 5 minus negative 3 and then square okay so this is for 2 then the other one is for negative 3 okay so 2 sorry close it 2 then you can use your calculator to count it so 5 minus which gives you 1 over 9 minus so here you got 1 over 64 okay then after that you can sure we get to your answer which will give you 55 over 288 yeah, you can try with your calculator and get your answer uh, yeah okay all right so d so it's still going to be the same thing so we start with integration so let's expand this first Okay, start integrate. Okay, you can take a paper and do it together. So yeah, you can check whether you understand or not. So will be okay. All right. I hope you get it. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. So now we'll look at three questions about equation of normal, equation of curve, equation of tangent. So let's look. Uh, do some revision of the thing that we already learned before. So this is a chart that we did in a class. So basically, when you have an equation of curve. When you do your first differentiation, you are getting something called gradient function. So as you substitute the x-coordinate of the point that you want to be the tangent, then you will get what is the gradient for your tangent. So if you want to do your equation of tangent, then you will be substituting your x1, y1, which is the point on your tangent, 
inside the equation of a uh, straight line, which is y e y minus y one equals to m bracket x minus x one. So if you want to find equation of normal, then what are you going to do is with this gradient, you are going to find your gradient for normal, which uh, gradient of normal times gradient for tangent, you should be getting negative 1, which come out with this. After that, you're substituting into the straight line equation, and this is how you get your normal. So if you want to find your turning point, sorry, I, yeah, so if you want to find your turning point, right, then what do you need to do is you need to substitute dy dx equals to 0. So uh, when you want to identify whether it's maximum or minimum, then you need to do second derivative, okay, which is uh, second um, like you do one more time differentiation from dy dx okay so now we will use this concept so uh, it's exactly the reverse process when we talk about integration so now we are going to look at three questions then we solve it together by using the information of this chart okay so let's see can you see that okay number one Okay, a curve is such that dy dx equals to 12x cubed minus 1 over x squared and 1, 2 is a point on the curve. Find the equation of curve. So meaning that now you are having dy dx, meaning you have your gradient function and 1, 2 is exactly one point on the curve. Then you need to find equation of curve. So you are here and you need to find equation of curve. So from y to dy dx you differentiate so from dy dx to y is the reverse process so what do you need to do you need to do integration so meaning curve from so equation of curve is basically your y so how do you get your y so y is equal to then you start your integration so integrate dy dx with respect to x Okay, now let's put our function inside. So 12x cubed minus 1 over x squared dx equals to... Okay, then now you can start to do your differentiation. So power plus 1 divided by the power. So you it will give you 3x power 4. So this one is basically x power negative 2. So when you plus 1, you get negative 1 times negative 1, which gives you a positive, and 1 over x, okay? Because minus 2, sorry, negative 2 plus 1, you get negative 1. So don't forget, plus c. Okay, so now you see, this equation is an incomplete one, because what happened is you have a constant that you didn't identify. So this is why this question gives you something like 1, 2, is actually a point on the curve. So we need to use this point on the curve to help us to find what is the constant. So if this is the point on the curve, meaning that it should fit into the equation of curve like perfectly. So what we can do is from the point 1, 2, then let's do substitution. So y is 2, 3, x is 1, 4, plus 1 over 1 plus c. So now we can solve for our c. So c will be equals to 2 minus 3 plus uh, 2 minus 3 minus 1, which will give you negative 2. Okay, so since you already get your c as negative 2, then what you need to do, you need to copy again your equation, which gives you the answer. The equation of the graph uh, of the curve is y equals to 3 x power 4 plus 1 over x minus 2. Okay, then this is your complete equation of curve. Okay, so let's look at the second example. We have three examples for this. Okay, so second example. So a curve has a gradient function mx minus 8 where m is a constant. Given that the minimum point of the curve is 2, negative 4, so find the value of m and find the y-intercept of the curve. Okay, so a curve has a gradient function mx minus 8. So what you can try to do is identify from the information that we have. When we talk about gradient function, meaning that it's dy dx, then you can write down what the question gives to you first. So gradient function is mx minus 8. So let's do this. So dy dx is equal to mx minus 8. Okay, so this is the first equation that we can get from this question. Then after that, settle the first sentence. 
So the second sentence, given that the minimum point of the curve is 294. So you still remember normally how do we find minimum point? Yeah, so it's at here. So when you want to find minimum point, it's basically turning point. So turning point, it will be dy dx equals to 0. So meaning what happened here is that when dy dx equals to 0, what is your x? Your x is 2. So this is the second, <coughs> excuse me. So this is the second information that we can get from this uh, question. So now let's look at A. So we need to solve what is the value of M. So now you have dy dx equals to mx minus 8. And the question tells you that the minimum point is 294, which tells you dy dx equals to 0 and x equals to 2. So what you can try to do is combine these two functions together. So meaning when dy dx equals to 0, your x will be 2. So now we try to substitute it into this equation. So dy dx equals to 0. So 0 equals to mx. So what's your x? Your x is 2. Because when dy dx equals to 2, your x is 2. So x, 2 minus 8. Okay? So 2m will be equals to 8. So that's why your m is 4. Okay? Then you settle. So this is the question for A. So now B. You need to find the y in the set of the curve. So in case for you to find y in the set of the curve, what do you need? You need to find the equation of the curve first. Okay. So now you have gradient function equals to 4x minus 8. So basically you are here. So when you want to find equation of the curve, it's the same thing like the question just now you need to do integration. So y will be equals to integrate dy dx with respect to dx. So equals to 4x minus 8 dx. Then we can do your integration. So 2x squared minus 8x plus c. And you realize that it's the same thing. So now you need to solve your C. So let's look at the question whether they give you any info about a point on the curve. So yeah, you have a, since the minimum point of the curve is 294, then of course 294 is on the curve itself. So that's why we can substitute 2 and 94. So 94 equals to 2, 2 squared minus 8, 2 plus C. So C equals to and just negative 4 minus 8 then my sorry plus 12. I will give you the answer positive 4. Okay? So now you can rewrite your equation of curve which is y equals to 2x squared minus 8x plus 4. Okay, so this is a quadratic. So if you don't know how to read the y in the set, then of course you can substitute x equals to 0. But if you already remember that the c part is actually your y in the set. So basically y in the set will be equals to 4. Okay, sorry, now I realize that I hope that you can read the whole question. Yeah, so you can pause here if you want to write down anything. Okay, so that's it for... Uh, example 2. So let's look at the last example. Okay, given second derivative equals to 2x cubed plus 1 divided by x cubed and the gradient of the curve is 5 over 2 at the point 1, 1 over 2. Find the value of y when x equals to 1 over 2. Okay, so same thing what you can try to do is let's try to write out what the question gives you first. Okay, so the question gives you d square y over dx square is basically equals to 2x cubed plus 1 over x cubed. That's the first information. After that, they give you that the gradient of the curve is 5 over 2 at the point of 1, 1 over 2. So meaning what happened here is x equals to 1. Then what is the gradient? It's dy dx, right? So gradient of the tangent. Okay, so dy dx will be equals to 5. 
over two. So this is the two information. And the question one is to find the value of y when x equals to one over two. So when you want to find the y when x equals to a value, meaning that you should get what is the equation of the curve, then only you can start to do the rest. So now meaning that we need to start from d square y dx square. Then we integrate the first time to get us to dy dx. Then after that, different uh, integrate second time to let us to get us to y. So let's start with the first one. So now let's find dy dx first. So to find dy dx is basically integrate d square y dx square with respect to dx. So equals to. So maybe we should always simplify this. Okay, two x cubed divided by x cubed give you two, then plus one over x cubed, which is x negative three dx. Then we can start integrate two x minus two. Hey, I'm sorry. So plus one, then divide by the number. Okay, so it will give you negative. 1 over 2x negative 2. So now we need to continue on plus c. Okay, then after that, you need to solve your first constant first before you can move on. So dy dx is this one. So what information can help us to get this? Meaning that you must have a set of information tell you what is x, what uh when x equals to something and dy dx equals to what yeah so this is exactly what is given in a question which tells you that the gradient of the curve is one over two at a point one one over two so meaning when x equals to one dy dx equals to five over two so let's substitute five over two equals to two one minus one over two one plus c Okay, so with your calculator, you should be able to get c equals to 1. So 5 over 2 minus 2, and then plus 1 over 2. Yeah, that will give you the answer 1. So now you can write your equation, a complete equation for your gradient function. dy dx equals to 2x minus, so if you, yeah, 1 over 2, x negative 2, and then plus 1. Okay, so this is not our answer yet because the question wants us to find the value of y. So meaning what are we going to do next is to find equation of y. So again, okay, another integration. Okay, so integrate 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 2 plus 1 dx. So when you integrate, you should be able to get x squared, then uh, plus 1 over 2x, negative 1. So plus x, and don't forget, plus c. So again, now you have the other c here, So which might be different from the c here, because this is for dy dx and this is for y. So now we need a pair of another complete information. So please bear in mind this is x, y. So you cannot use x equals to 1 divided by x equals to 5 over 2. Because dy dx is not equal to y. So what do you need here is a point. So the point 5, 1 over 2. So meaning when x equals to 1, your y is 1 over 2. So that's why we can substitute x as 1 over 2. And then, sorry, y as 1 over 2 and x as 1. 1 over 2, 1, negative 1, plus 1, plus c. So let's see what's your c. So 1 over 2 minus 1, minus 1 over 2, minus 1, which will give you the answer negative 2. Okay, so let's rewrite your equation again. So y equals to x squared plus 1 over 2x plus x minus 2. Okay, I'm just rewrite this into the other form. Okay, oops. Alright, then you have your equation ready, then you can straight away. So don't forget this question want you to find the value of y when x equals to 1 over 2. Then we just substitute x equals to 1 over 2. So y equals to 1 over 2 square plus 1 over 2, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 2. 
So basically, 1 over 4 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 minus 2, which will give you, I think, the answer negative 1 over 4. Let me check. Yeah, okay, 1 over 4. So that's all for the lesson. So you can, uh, I hope that you can see everything. You can copy down the question first, then after that, look at the video and to help you to get to the answer. Okay, so by now you should able to like do everything from your exercise 9.1 to 9.5. So if you have any question, then we might having a Q&A in the future. So yeah, take care and stay at home. Okay, bye.